Testing a new microphone today. Let me know what do you think. Moondrop has gone and done it again. This time they're destroying the half in ear buds market with their Moondrop block. In short, it sounds too good for 20 bucks, but don't take my word for it. I'll compare it with some of my best picks later. So let's get started right now. Selamat pagi. Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my review of the Moondrop Block, a 20 bucks half-in ear that looks like a mini space travel. But unlike any half-in ears that copied Apple EarPods design, this has a traditional flat head design that directs sound without any channeling. We'll talk about how this is actually better in my opinion. But first, as always, I'm giving you my own honest thoughts here and I would really appreciate if you use the affiliate links in the description when buying stuff because you'll help me keep delivering these videos. And with that said, let's get started into the juiciest part which is the sound quality. Now, I would say this is the single biggest factor why I said it smoked the competition. And let me refresh you quickly, half in ears always sound inferior to in-ear buds simply because they have to fight the noise around you. But the plus side is they're open, so they're more comfortable and you can hear what is on your surrounding. But getting back, especially at this 20 bucks range, I used to accept anything as long as the bass is not non-existent. Only until very recently, the Soundcore K20i came, which had pretty good bass. Overall sound quality was just okay, but value-wise, it's pretty good. Enter Moondrop Block. I was surprised at first listen and that doesn't happen often. Moondrop is not joking when they say they tuned this with the latest and greatest calibration system. They simply sound amazing. Almost unbelievable for 20 bucks which easily tramples on half in ears twice and three times the price. Let's bring some song samples here to compare. Starting with K-Rock genre, Break the Wall by Dreamcatcher, lots of energy and detail to be resolved here, and Moondrop Blocks takes the easy win over Feel CC Nano and Soundbeats Air 4 in terms of portraying the full range of the frequency. Now the bass still doesn't reach as low as the Soundbeats Air 4 here, or to an extent the Air 5, which had similar but more refined tuning after testing them at CS 224. As you can see from the graph here, the bass this is actually similar to the AirPods 2, but not the AirPods 3. But the difference is the mid-range to treble. The Moondrop block just sounded much more natural and enjoyable to listen to. It makes the default Soundbeats Air 4 EQ piercing and tiring to listen to. And sure, you can EQ the Soundbeats out, but let me tell you, this is my first time testing the new Pete audio app, which turns out to be another nightmare, mainly because it forgets the custom EQ and returns to default EQ every time I switch between different earbuds here. If this happens to you as well, let me know down in the comments below. But coming back to the song, even after reducing the 1.6K Hertz and above, the Air 4 still sounds noticeably V-shaped. Very strong bass and treble that struggles when the music gets crowded. The Moondrop block feels more open, like you can finally breathe. Even without the strong sub bass kick, it's still much nicer to hear so much more instruments and vocals with ease and also without tiring you out. Now, I really wanted to show you the difference to my longtime favorite, the Feel CC Nano, but unfortunately, my left earbud here gave in. It still charges, the touch control still works, but it just doesn't make sound anymore which is a shame. So I cannot talk about stereo imaging here, but still talking about the tonality here with Barit Labralu, a local pop Indo song, the difference is clear ever since the intro. The Moondrop block is not as punchy. It doesn't emphasize the bass and treble as much, but it's got a more neutral and relaxed tuning, which brings up the mid body of the vocals and instruments more, something you don't get with other half in ears, even up to the hundred bucks range. Now, I really think you have to listen to believe it, especially if you like the open ear fit. This is one of the best half in ear sound I've heard ever since I started out with the Xiaomi Buds days. That was like five years ago at this point. Really curious how it will compare to the latest Samsung and Apple half in ears. I'll try to follow it up in a short reel, but touching on the fit a little bit, the Moondrop block is actually one of the rare half in ears that can stay in my left ear very well. All thanks to the shape that doesn't cone out like literally every other AirPod shaped ones in the market. And it's also very comfortable, like I can easily wear this for hours and hours, no problem. So yeah, hit like if you enjoyed the video so far. I'm also working on the Moondrop Ultrasonic as well as the just launched Moondrop Mocha soon. So subscribe to not miss them. And let's continue and talk about the rest of the experience. Starting from the build quality, the block is literally a mini space travel. It's got the same volume as the Feel CC Nano here. 
and you do realize that I've been comparing this to earbuds twice, three times the price, right? So it's pretty interesting how this can compete. And although I do know some don't like the lidless design here, in my experience, I've never had any occasion where the earbuds drop out accidentally. You can drop them if you snap it like that, but that never happens really in real life. Maybe my real nitpick is initially, you'll find it difficult to know which earbuds is which side. But let me tell you this shortcut I learned. To take it out correctly, look from the top and check out the base ports or the holes here. Basically, they should be on the outside. Then when putting the earbuds back in, your thumb should be on the LED light. I know it would be much faster if Moondrop put a little dot that you can feel to differentiate front and back. So Moondrop, if you're listening, it would be awesome. But let me tell you, once you get the hang of it, it becomes an easy habit and I never put the earbuds in the wrong side again. And really, I'm using this thing every single day since I got it. Moving on, this is a very, very simple product. It's got one of the smallest box I've ever seen, which happens to be, well, a block. And then you don't have app support, which honestly I can forgive because of how amazing it sounds already. And yeah, battery wise, it lasts around six hours, which is good enough. There's no fancy high-res codex to bog it down. And latency-wise, I'm going to show you quickly right here while I talk about the lack of volume control. But that's just Moondrop, you know, they never have volume control, so... Finally, connectivity is also one thing that I wanted to touch on and it's less of a problem here than later when I talk about the Moondrop Ultrasonic. But Moondrop earbuds are maybe one of the only few left that cuts out music when I left my phone on the first floor and I moved to second floor in this studio or in the room beside. Now I think at 20 bucks, it is much easier to forgive. But if we're talking about phone in a pocket and you just go out and about, the connection is very solid. I've never had any problems whatsoever. And honestly, this is becoming the earbud that I pick before I go to bed. It's actually pretty decent, although it doesn't disappear as well as the Soundcore K20i, but sound is so much better. So <laughs> anyway, let's check out the mic test now and let's wrap up the video. Okay, welcome everyone to the microphone test with the Moondrop block that we are using right now. What do you think of the sound quality? And actually, this is my third time re-recording this section because you know, like the first one, I didn't really expect much because Moondrop has never been the best when it comes to microphones. The second time, I found out that the first recording was good, so I might be overreacting it a little bit. But now, the third time, I'm trying to be more a little bit rational. I think the sound is a little bit, it's not super clean, but I think compared to like anything at this price range, especially the Soundcore K20i, it really fares very well. And right now, there's a little bit of wind coming as well. What do you think? Okay, let's move on to the phone microphone now and we'll see how it compares. Okay, so here we are now with my iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's not super, super loud right now, but there is a little bit of like cars and motorcycles. Also a quite strong wind actually blowing at me right now. So it has given this a little bit of a challenge, but I think this handles it pretty well, especially for something this affordable, so, you know. I have no problem giving this an auto instant recommendation. Blindly buy it even and anyone will be happy. Anyway, I'll try to put my showcase of the Soundcore K20i. It's also pretty good, very all well-rounded. If you prefer an in-ear tip instead, check out this one. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth and I'll see you in the next one.